This is RMX Reactions, where we break down your user submitted spearfishing videos to help you guys become better spearfishermen. We got some pretty unbelievable submissions this time, so enjoy this video, like it before it gets started, and then we'll see you in the water. All right, and for our first video, we got Hanapa Action here. He's got a pretty sick channel. Looks like an Alua, super, super shallow. And guys, do not unload your gun until you get all the way back to the beach, because you have no idea what's gonna pop up, like this Alua in like three feet of water. Epic fish, Aaron, nicely done. Next clip here is from my boy, Captain Jack Spiro. He's got a channel out of Florida. Now, this is tandem style diving, which means he can only be in one place. And that is Stewart, Florida, where we are all so afraid that we dive down together back to back to kind of like protect each other. Otherwise, we'd all just float on the surface. So he clearly gets down here. There is Mr. Bull Shark with of course, a giant cobia in tow. Now he looks kind of uncomfortable. It looks like this is probably a little bit deep for him, but he manages to get down there and stone this cobia, which you are so pumped to do with all those sharks all around that are always over there, always causing you problems. So he's like, got it, I'm cruising, coming up. His buddy comes in, he's like, what? What was that? Out of nowhere, Mr. Bull Shark came back in. It was like, no, no, this one's mine. I know you stoned it, but I'm gonna eat this one anyways. Epic video, Jack. So we got another clip here from Captain Jack Spiro. Looks like a lobster out here in this hole. Looks like Miami, South Florida, Caribbean style, pretty reef. I wish out here in Hawaii our lobsters just lived under ledges like this in the middle of the day and you could just grab them by hand. But it's a little bit harder out here. But it looks like he manages to get in there, get that hand, grab a solid lobster there. And this is definitely something to keep an eye out anywhere you are in the world when you're lobstering is that a lot of things love the sound of lobster struggling. So he grabbed that lobster, made a bunch of commotion, and then charging in out of nowhere is this mutton snapper. Able to get a nice little shot there, land this thing, and double up. Next up, we've got Zednek Kabbalah. I have no idea how to pronounce your name, dude, but he's got a pretty sick channel. He actually helped me a lot when I first moved out here. He wrote me on Instagram and was like, bro, to get the moo, you gotta put your face down in the sand, wait as long as you can, and then that moo will come over. But this is his clip. He's down here, clearly in an Alua house or an Omilu house in this case. Manages to stick a really good one and really yank it out of here. And that's really important, guys. If you wanna get something out of its hole, you gotta work hard and rip it back out because he could have shot that thing, cruised onto the surface, and had a disaster down there. Had a full ball of death of that thing running around, breaking him off in the rocks, breaking his spear, bending his shaft, all that kind of stuff. Instead, put the heat on that thing, ripped him back out of his hole, and then got to the surface. But what's really, really cool about this clip that's insane is pay attention to what goes on on the bottom. So there's almost always multiple fish in a house. And you can look down and see that other stud Omilu just cruising along. And this is a, just a really good skill to have for your normal everyday diving. I'm not saying go out here and try and get multiple fish out of one house, but when you are, you need to learn how to reset your gear on the move. That's a really important skill to have. So he's swimming after this other Omilu. And while he's doing that, he's killing his fish. He killed that first Omilu, put it on his belt, sorted. Now he's swimming after this fish, and now he's reloading that gun. So he's checking, he's reloading that gun, he's getting all sorted, and he's like, I'm gonna go try and double up here. And I'm gonna fast forward here, but it was pretty insane to see how quickly he followed this thing, reloaded, swam back down, and then stuck this one again, and was again able to double up on two pretty epic fish. Check out merch. Merch has officially dropped. We are restocked. We have performance tees. We got sweaters. We got women's stuff. We got hats. We have so much stuff. Go over to the website, buy something, support the dream, and we'll see you guys in the water. So from Hawaii, Zednek Kabla spent some time out in one of the European islands. I'm not sure if this was the Azores or where he was at, but the Mediterranean style reef hunting is one of my favorites in the world because it's so close to how we hunt out here in Hawaii. So any kind of fish out there is an absolute trophy, but this one right here, the Dentex, is known to be like way, way more brilliant than even the Moo. So for him to get down here, get to the reef, in relatively shallow water, he had to be in some pretty unbelievable zones. So it's a Dentex here for Zednek Kabla. Epic fish there on the pathos. Stoked for you, buddy. 
And then one more clip here from Zednak. Check this out. He just pitched a parrotfish out over into the blue water as a throw flasher. Clearly that Ono just turned, went straight over at it. He's gonna be able to do a nice little easy duck dive here and line up on one of the coolest shots that I've ever seen taken. Check this out right here. I don't even wanna talk through it. Epic, epic stone shot with the single band on that little pathos rolled an unbelievable fish. Zedlek Kabula, you are the freaking man. Guys, I'll put a link to his channel down below. For next clip here, we've got Lorix Lund from Somewhere Unbelievable, and I don't even care that he did not get this shot on camera, because guys, wait until you see what this, what the scenery looks like all around him. Guys, this is just gotta be one of the most beautiful spearfishing locations in the world. Absolutely freaking beautiful. Guys, I wanna go visit here. I don't know if this is Sweden or Norway or somewhere, somewhere epic. We got Loritz again here, and believe it or not, he's rocking like a headhunter predator pole spear all the way out in whatever paradise this is. You know, he's probably looking at us and being like, oh, Hawaii's paradise, and we're looking over there and being like, wow, absolutely beautiful. I don't even care, again, that you missed this thing and it took you two shots to whack this little baby soul or whatever it is, but freaking beautiful. Show us above land again. We don't want to see underwater here. Show us what the landscape looks like around you, Loritz. Check it out, yes, yes, this is what we're looking for. Guys, it is unbelievably beautiful over there. I, I can't get over it. Lorik sent in a couple clips last time we did this and I felt the exact same way. So, I don't know what he's gonna shoot here. Uh, really, he's out here again in some little bit deeper water. I mean, this looks actually kind of like spearfishing. It's not like he's got those little flat fish in the shallow waters. I, I Again, dream trip. I wanna get out here one of these days, search for those giant halibuts, but or also shoot these. I don't know what these, the cod, I guess, some kind of cod or, or something like that. But just so cool to get to see your guys' clips from all over the world and get to see different areas. Now show us above water again, Loritz. Let's see it. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful, guys. We're totally switching gears again here into some kind of tropical, warm, beautiful coral reef waters. And this is some kind of coral trout. I don't remember exactly. I feel like I shot one of these in Fiji, but I don't see this like beautiful color pattern very much. Absolutely gorgeous. Nice big wooden gun there. Clearly was not afraid of people. That thing came cruising right in as he was descending. Really stick zone shot on a beautiful fish. We got another clip here from Dion Entre. Same beautiful location, crystal clear, warm tropical waters. Puts a hand on the back side of that gun there, gives a little bit more stability on those bigger, very powerful guns. Takes a long shot, looks like another one of these coral trout or something. Spined the thing, but it popped off. All those bands, all that power, still didn't quite have the penetration to get all the way through that thing, but was able to get down there and still grab a hold of that beautiful, beautiful trout. So we got a submission from Eddie here, and I like this already. He's clearly posted up right here over a nice overhang on the edge, looking out into deeper water, doing some of those dusting, a little bit of that scratching with that right hand, and waiting to see kind of what's cruising in. And those big unicorn collas came cruising right in, able to extend that gun, do that little bit of a pounce, and get out there and stick one of these fish. Nicely done, Eddie. So next up here, we got Francesco Zago. And what's cool about here is right off the bat, you can tell the dirty water, but you can also see that he's following a marker buoy down. And that's something that we do all over the world if we find ourselves hunting small spots in dirty water. It really helps you to not miss the spot, especially if you got some current and you've got to do a drift over it. So it looks like a beautiful giant shipwreck here. And I'm not really sure what part of the world you're in, but there's clearly some bait fish around, a little bit of life cruising, and I'm not sure what you're hunting here, but it's, it's pretty cool. Huge, serious shipwreck. That thing is giant. Um, doesn't look like that deep, maybe in that 40, 50, 60 foot range, but looking around, oh, he's in, he's in the, 
this is a that was like the batfish thing so this is gonna be i believe the middle east i could be wrong but this fish right here it may look like a goliath grouper but i'm pretty sure it's actually a hamor which is one of the grouper species that they hunt over there on that side of the world they only get about this big but this dude is clearly stoked and correct me down below if i'm wrong let me know where you guys think this is or maybe that is just a baby goliath grouper so these clips here didn't come with a name but what's so cool about this is i swear this is the treasure coast literally exactly how i grew up diving like this is like that bathtub reef type style with like a little bit of hard bottom can't quite get out deep enough to the real coral reefs you're kind of in the surf zone still on that hard stuff looking for these little baby sheephead and this is literally exactly how i started diving guys this exact same way going from the shoreline hunting sheephead just being so stoked to shoot anything at all that was legal and that I could take home and eat. You got another dive here, a little bit cleaner water, but that same type of bottom. And this sheephead, anywhere you are in the world, guys, you gotta have some kind of starter fish where you learn to spearfish. And these are perfect for that. Out here in Hawaii, I really like the king kole and the kole for that. But in Florida, those are your mangrove snappers and your sheephead and, and maybe your grunts. Stoked for you here, buddy. Thank you so much for sharing. This thing really brought me back in time. Cool clip here from Glenn Sands. Looks very similar to kind of what I would do. He's got the flasher going down. He's cruising down real slow. He's hunting a combination of the reef and the blue water. But what he does do that I maybe not wouldn't do myself is he's down here and he hovers and those jobfish come into him and it was awesome he, he got it he got it done he made it happen and I'm not sure what his real skill level is but I bet you if he were to get down all the way to the bottom he could have a a chance at any of the fish he wanted you know those jobfish are definitely gonna come into him but maybe there was a giant in the back Either way, stoked you got to land this fish. I love hunting these things, and someday I want to go somewhere where there's whole packs of them just like this. Next guy here is Carlos from Puerto Rico, and I used to love diving out there. I went there a whole bunch in college. I haven't been in a really long time, but again, this is super cool to see some footage from here. Now, one of the things that we always shoot over there is dog snapper. I don't know why, but it seems like they're all over the place over there, and that's exactly what this guy was able to get right here on the drop. Little nurse shark is cruising up to him, but for you guys who don't dive the Caribbean, that thing is basically like a cat. It's not gonna hurt you, not gonna take your fish. Another dive here on that Caribbean style of beautiful reef. He's got like, looks like a little aim right roller there, and this dive he's actually able to get down to the bottom, kind of post up, look around, do a little bit of real hunting. You know, and he sees his target fish kind of out there in the distance, and he's able to kind of sit down there, camouflage, hidden, crawl up, wait until that fish comes in close enough and present a shot on another really beautiful dog snapper. Last dive for Carlos here is a beautiful hogfish and I didn't see a whole lot of these over there but Carlos comment down below if you're in Fajardo. I know that that region of the island tended to have a whole lot more hogfish and I didn't get to dive over there too much I was more on the Aguadilla side but hoping definitely next year to get back over to Puerto Rico and do some serious diving. Pretty gnarly video here. so he's getting down he's diving down and you'll see a big king pop up out of nowhere. And he's able to kind of extend that gun, get that shot, but then watch what happens to his reel here. He sticks this thing with this mako, and then the reel is locked up. And if you've ever fought a kingfish, like these are like some of the most powerful fish in the ocean. These, these are serious, like more strong than even like an Ono. So he's clearly in a little bit of that panic mode right there. But anytime you got a reel, you gotta be ready to let that thing go. Clearly it worked out here for Carson and he was able to land this stud king. So here we got a series of really cool dives from Christian Alapeyo, but he's clearly again out here in some kind of beautiful tropical area. I want to say Tahiti, French Polynesia, something like that. But he gets down here to the bottom and you know, he's got that head whipping around, but regardless of how comfortable you are down there, like getting to the bottom and hunting from right there is key, like that is it. You can see that some species of Uhu comes cruising right in, he's able to stick it. And then next dive here, there's clearly some kind of cool drop off here. And you'll see when he gets down to the bottom, he does something really cool that I like to do a lot myself. He finds a handhold for that left hand. And that gives him something to kind of secure himself on the bottom with, with his fingers. And then he does another thing that I love, 
which is plant that face down into the sand to kind of hide his eyes and kind of hide all of his energy from those fish and then wait and see kind of what comes into to him. And you'll see, he's sitting down there, he's posted up, he's got his left hand planted, so if he needs an extended, if he needs to pounce, he can do it by just pulling himself forward with that left hand. And that's exactly what he does. He closes that gap just enough with that left hand by just pulling it forward because he had already planted it there beforehand. So we got another Christian dive here, and you can see that little bit of flasher there on his muzzle. And that's again a Tahitian technique, a lot of the guys use it over there. I'm not sure exactly which fish it's for, but I've seen it over there multiple times. So he's cruising on down here, heading towards, you know, clearly some deeper water. I mean, this guy knows what he's doing, he's, he's clearly a proficient diver. But one of the things I don't love is his angle here. He's kind of semi-hunting midwater while also kind of heading to the bottom. And what that does is that really just creates a lot of time on your way to the bottom that's kind of ineffective. You know, you're not really hunting, you're not really waiting on the bottom for those fish to get more comfortable for, for to you. So eventually he does get down, he clearly wanted to get over here a little bit to this rocky bundle, but he could have crawled over there or he could have angled down there a little bit better from the surface. I can't remember exactly what kind of snapper this is. Let me know down below what kind of snapper, but I remember them being very, very smart out in Fiji and a super fun fish to hunt. Next drop here again by Christian, looks like there's a beautiful little overhang that he is aiming towards. and. You know, that's great for structure, it's also great for hiding. You know, fish like to hide in it, but I like to hide in them too. You can see how kind of gorgeous the whole reef life ecosystem is over here. Christian, I hope you comment down below and let me know exactly where this is, because I definitely want to come visit. You're hunting these uhus, these parrotfish, but I bet you the dogtooth tuna are not too far behind. So we got another spot here that's top of the bucket list, South Africa on the west coast. Daniel is cruising down here, clearly that colder water that holds a little bit about kelp and life all over the place. I think these are hot and tots, he calls them. I don't know, they kind of look like chubs or some kind of brimmy, perchy something, but if these are edible, there's a whole lot of them. So this is pretty sick. He's clearly down here on the bottom, able to really kind of take his time, move slowly, pick out that big giant one he wants, and then stick it with that Rob Allen single band, classic South African special. Next bit here is Brandon Lamb out of Miami. Looks like a mutton snapper is what he's gonna shoot. He's on this beautiful reef. I love Miami, I love diving down here. I don't love that flopper tip you got going on. That's like kind of one of those cheesy snorkel scuba dive shops that you kind of find, but it looks like it's gonna do the job right here. He's posted up on the high spot, waiting for that mutton to kind of cruise along. Is able to come within range because he was hidden up there in the higher zone. He was able to extend that gun and get a really solid shot there on a mutton snapper. Nicely done, Brandon. These next two are from Blake Phillips. I am pretty sure this is Australia. And one of the coolest things about doing this kind of, you know, video dump from all you guys is seeing these places from all over the world, but over and over and over, Australia, top of the list, number one. I know I've got a ton of subscribers from over there. I know you guys have some of the fishiest zones in the world. And I did that video, top five places in the world, and I know offended a lot of you Australians, but that's only because I haven't been to Australia yet. So you can see every single dive down here just seems to be loaded with fish. I mean, this is uh, some type of snapper. Now you Aussies are gonna be calling them some kind of jack. Stoked for you, Blake, nice shot. Next Blake dive here again. Guys, from anywhere but Australia, look down here and see how many large, sizable, delicious looking fish are around. You know, you, you really only see this over here in Australia videos. You know, there's some kind of grouper cruising right up to you there. I don't think they shoot some of their larger grouper species like this one. So clearly that one was not on the menu. There's some other kind of snapper species right there cruising along that he, he has no interest in. Blake is not shooting that one. I don't know why, I don't know what's wrong with that one. But it's so sick to see Australia constantly with just so much life around all the time. And I think what he's doing is he's looking for that school of snapper out there further off into the into the blue, you know? And he's gonna do the iguado technique over there. I hope that he's pulling with that left hand and not kicking with his fins, because otherwise he's gonna scare his fish away. But you know, reality, it's Australia, they're everywhere. Probably just waits for another one to come by. But a really solid breath hold here from Blake. Dude knows what he's doing. Spooks these things, but but relaxes again. Sits back down slows down again and they're all gonna come right back over and he sticks that one right there Blake stoked I want to come visit you and hunt these spots next up we got Axel Herrera 
from guaranteed going to be California someplace. You know, I can tell for two things. You've got three massive bands on your huge wooden gun and you're hunting in like 20 feet of water, which is such a California thing to do. And I'd make fun of you more for missing this beautiful sheep head, except my last trip to California, I was out there with Austin Dairy guys and I missed one exactly like this point blank. And it, that was, I blame it still, on the six banded wooden cannon that I was borrowing from those guys. But looks like you get redemption right here again. I don't know where you find clear water with this many fish over there in California, but I'd like to I'd like to know and I'd like to come dive with you next time I'm over here. So I, again, switch to a smaller gun. Now he's got that right hero. I'm much, much more happier with that thing. He's able to swing it and actually move it through the water, line it up with this, this another stud sheep head. I hope you made fish cakes out of this thing, Axel. Nicely done. So next up here we got Tom Humphrey and I have no idea where he is in the world, but this is a really cool kind of learning video for a lot of you guys. He gets down here underneath the ledge. He finds a really, really nice hiding spot. He's doing everything perfectly right. All those fish are kind of cruising around. They're not afraid of him and they're coming closer and closer and closer. But what he does here is just when he's got everything going in his favor, he gets out of his hiding spot. It's like waiting in the woods and then running out after the deer as soon as it appears. So he ended up missing that fish, but that was a good learning video for all you guys. So next up here is Sky Lindell, clearly a Hawaii video. Guys, check out the noises. Just stop and listen for a second. So what that is, is those are actual whales. And it's just becoming whale season right here again, where all the humpbacks come through and I cannot wait to see them. So Sky gets down here into the clearly Hawaiian reef and finds that nice sand pocket exactly as I would. And now he gets down here and he's gonna do a couple grunts. And the only really thing I see doing wrong here is he's just doing a lot of movement. So with these grunts are trying to attract those fish in, but unfortunately the more movement you're doing, the more you're kind of scaring everything away. So everything's kind of acting against each other, but still like the worst Hawaiian diver is still better than like the best diver from anywhere else. It's incredible how good you guys develop and how good you guys get just from diving out here all the time. So he's able to do that little bit of dust and clearly a really nice long deep dive. And that Uku comes straight in, does the lunge, makes the shot, and is stoked. Right, yeah. <laughs> nice fish, dude. Oh. Yeah, it's like a 15. Yeah. Oh, 15. Yeah. Oh, beauty. Yeah. Yes, there guy. you go. Nice yeah. So another skydive. <laughs> Get it? Skydive. But another skydive right here. And clearly, again, now I know he's in Hawaii, the water is a little bit dirtier, but he gets down and he finds this little bit of pocket, you know, this little little low spot in the reef where he's able to kind of conceal some of his, you know, body, camouflage just a little bit because he's looking for Moo right here. And what he's got to do is he's got to hide and then he's got to attract him over. And that's exactly what he does. He posts up, does some of that dusting, brings those fish. You can see them just out there in the horizon. They're just, they're some of the smartest fish in the world. And then once one gets a little bit close enough, shoots that gun forward, makes a shot, lands a moo. Stoked for you, Sky. Nicely done. All right, Robbie Keane, I have no idea where you are or what this fish is, but I had to include it because I hope someone out there can tell me where it is. That's one of my favorite parts about this whole game is guessing kind of what's going on. But, you know, now that I'm thinking about it more and more, I think maybe South Africa. I don't know. But check this out. Some type of grouper or something of some species cruising the shallows, sticks it, doesn't show me the fish, so I have no idea what this is. But if you know what this is, let me know down below. So this is Rise Clay. We got some dirty water cobia action from Australia. And that's like my whole childhood. That's how I grew up. Dirty water and cobia. So stoked to see that. Some kind of artificial structure down here, it looks like. Gets down and as usual, those cobia charge straight in made the shot and stoked that you didn't have to do this off of like 45 bull sharks nicely done rise clay i got some good footage because the school just came in at me yeah. and this one just charged straight at me <laughs> Yeah. Next up, we got Remington from the Big Island. This looks like a double Kahala. Kahala is an amberjack for all you guys who live out there everywhere else in the world, but one of them definitely just stuck right there, and a lot of times they will stick around. So if you get one, sometimes your buddy can swim back down, get down there, and get another one of these guys. Stoked for your Remington, nicely done. Maybe I'll see you around Big Island. 
So next up here, we got Raphael Ziracombe. Now, this is a pretty interesting sequence of events, so pay attention here. You can see he's clearly somewhere tropical, somewhere beautiful. I don't know where. Again, I want to lean towards Australia because there's fish everywhere. Maybe a Madagascar, I'm not sure. Maybe that part of the world somewhere. But we'll see, he gets down to the bottom, clearly a knowledgeable hunter. He's down here, he knows what he's doing. He's posting up on the bottom and then he's crawling towards using that aguado technique to kind of get over there towards that fish. And I'm not exactly sure what he's looking at. There's some kind of grouper over there it looked like that had like, you know, its fins doing its little wobbly thing, which again leads me back to Australia. There's probably just fish all over the place. And he, his biggest problem was he couldn't decide which one he wanted to shoot at. But the uku comes in, which doesn't matter where you are in the world, ukus die. They are fantastic to eat. They're one of the most challenging to hunt. He rolls this thing over and you think you'd think this would be the end of it guys but i promise you it is not somehow this thing spins off of the shaft and almost gets away he sees it though over there on the bottom drifting down towards the bottom does another dive manages to reload and you'd think he'd go grab his fish but he's like nah man let me double up sticks this other uku gets back to the surface, grabs one breath, and is like, okay, now is the appropriate amount of time to go and grab my fish and really double up here. And the best part of this entire video is the reaction after landing two studs. Check this out, the guy is stoked. <laughs> So now that we're all thinking we just want to see Raphael shoot another fish so that he can celebrate again, we've got another one for you guys. Again, that same beautiful water, I have no idea where he is, I want to say Australia because there's so many fish again. He's got his little roller gun here, He's, he was unhappy with the last gun so maybe he switched it up, but he gets down, does some really interesting grunting and I kind of like it. Really rapid fire, small interval, really quick. and calls that uku right into him, again, rolls this one, and now it is time to celebrate. <laughs> and one more from Raphael. Now again, we're all rooting for you, buddy. Shoot something so that we can be slightly as happy as you are after you land these fish. I don't know what that was off to the side. Did you see that, guys, that was this? some kind of grouper species? Again, it's gotta be Australia. Again, like a laser, roll this thing, and then be stoked. <laughs> If you guys enjoyed this video and you want to help support the dream, go check out our merch. It is only available for a limited time and when it's gone, it's gone. Like this shirt right here, we are sold out of blue, you will never see them again. So go check them out before they're gone. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Consider submitting some videos of your own at the link down below. And we'll see you guys next time right here on Ryan Myers Expeditions. Yoo!